Hello, I'm Jacob Barnett. Here, I am heading off to a physics colloquium, but for now, I'm going to have a working lunch and try to describe what the quadratic formula is to all of you high school students. Notice that I am having a taco instead of tea. Tea served at regular distinguished universities, but I'm having a taco with fire sauce because, I mean, that's just the way it's meant to be. Okay, so the quadratic formula states that if I take a quadratic, which all a quadratic is, is here, let me write it out. Is this thing, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. If you ever see this, it's a quadratic. And the quadratic formula is going to find the roots. And the roots in this have little to do with carrots or anything else you might find that comes out of the ground. But instead, it's when this giant thing equals zero. Now let's try to actually explore why they call it roots and not think of it as being crazy. So why don't we just draw a typical quadratic. So here's the x-axis. There's the y-axis. And so a typical quadratic looks something like this, like a parabola. This one's a very simple quadratic, it's just a parabola, but I'm just using it for simplicity. Now, the roots are when this is zero, so that's on the x-axis. So, one way to think of why they call it roots is because typically when you have, like, carrot or strawberries or whatever kind of fruit or vegetable you want, well, assuming you eat vegetables, but <laughs> it's, their roots are on the ground. And you can think of it instead as a, the function having its roots on the x-axis instead. So, the quadratic formula states that to find the roots, you take x equals minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a, C. I'm running out of space on my little notebook paper. But. So, you got this for your quadratic formula. And although that looks scary, this is just where those two points are. And so, next, one way to try to memorizing this is move the B to the other side, and you get a negative side in front of your B. And then you divide by A, so you get the A in the bottom. And the rest is the root or radical. I just like more so. Anyway, why don't we try finding the roots of a typical function. So let's take our function to be nice and simple for a simple example. x squared plus 2x. So we need to find the roots of this. So the first thing you do is step one, this thing equals zero. And so there's a different approach to the next step, step two. You can do one of two things. For those of you who know how to factor, you can go ahead and do that. But factoring can be very hard. H A R D. Factoring is hard. So, except for in this example. In this example, we just pull out an x and it's nice and easy. x times x plus 2 equals 0. But we're going to try using the approach based on this formula. So instead, we use x equals the coefficient in front of the x, or coefficient just means what's in front of, so is the 1. So you have 1 times x squared. So since that's the 1, you take 2 times 1, which is just 2, as you all know from elementary school. And b or the term in front of the regular x, is 2. So since there's a minus sign, you have to be very careful and say negative 2 instead of just 2. Then, you have to add or subtract the square root of... Now, you may be wondering where the c is. It's just 0, because we don't have any third coefficient. So we just have this part of the radical equaling 0. And we're just left with b squared. So we take the square root of 4. And so 
negative 2 plus or minus 2 over 2. And then you can divide by 2 to get minus 1 plus or minus 1. Now, if you said negative 1 was a root, that is incorrect since there's this plus or minus thing. And you always have to take both. You can't just add or just subtract. You have to take add and subtract. So one way to do it is if you take negative 1 plus 1, which by definition is 0. Or x equals. Otherwise, you have minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. So these are the roots, which you can very easily see correspond to the factors. So either method works, but the factoring can be hard to do whenever you have this a term in there. This method is generalizable to any large amount of quadratic, or if you had hard coefficients, but I don't want to scare you guys with terrible math. I'm also sorry that I have to use this notebook. I mean, it's raining outside. I can't use the window, so I apologize. Okay, see you guys next time.